Hello, hello. Yes, it's the cockroach again, and yes, Sir David the Bard. And uh, I want to do a video on a donation uh, that I made to the Mormon Church when I was a Mormon. I was uh, living in uh, Paso Robles, California, and an uh, active member of that ward, and going to church, uh, wearing my garments, not screwing anybody but my wife, etc. Well, in those days, I was beginning to um, doubt and question the policies and the procedures Alexis saw of the uh, Mormon Church. So I went to uh, church Sunday one day and I was paying my tithing and you know I never made a lot of money ever that's why I want you to put money in the PayPal anyway anyway and subscribe I wrote a tithing check out to the bishop and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and it wasn't a big check good lord like I said I didn't have a lot of money I was raising 14 children and six wives and uh, trying to pay all the bills and I have to admit there were some bills that I, I didn't pay and uh, I'm not proud of that but it's the truth and you know me I have to tell both sides of the story and you decide so on the check on the back of the check where uh, they would endorse it I put for hungry children only no general authority salaries I wanted to control I was starting to mature I was starting to take responsibility to um, know where my money was going how it was going to be used and all I was doing is putting parameters and, and boundaries around my donation I wanted to go to feed hungry children well, I didn't think uh, too much about it and uh, the next Sunday I went to church <laughs> and the bishop said uh, the usual phrase is we need to have a chat. I love that phrase. The Mormons made that phrase up. I used to think he was my friend. He just wanted a casual conversation and chat with me. No, that's not what the Mormons mean. They say all the right things, but they do all the wrong things. And when you walk in and you see uh, a bishop or a state president with a knife in their hand, you just bend over, turn around, and let them stab you. And while they're stabbing you, you can kiss your ass goodbye. It's a chat. So the bishop sits me down. And he says, we, we have a problem. Gosh, have I ever heard that phrase before? Yeah. And I said, well, what's, what's the problem? And he said, no, you need to rewrite your uh, tithing check. I said, really? Was, did you guys lose it or tear it in half or it got smudged or, you know, did it bounce <laughs> in those days? <laughs> you call it now non-sufficient funds. We called it bounced. It bounced. It went to the bank and bounced back to the Mormon church. Well, they wanted their money. No, it didn't bounce. It wasn't a bounce check. I was breaking my pattern. It was a check that was really good. So I said, well, what's the problem with my check? And he said, well, it's what you put on the back of the check. I said, well, all I put on it is I wanted the money to go to hungry children and not to pay general authority salaries. Said, you can't do that. I said, no, I can do that. No, no, they can't cash the check. I said, but I can do that. And I did do it. I did do it. 
I'm not going to bow my head and say Let, yes like you made me do in the temple in the Mormon church for years and years. You took my money fraudulently and made me say, bow my head and say yes and agree to all the things as the covenant of concentrate, concentration uh, that I give up all of my time, talents, and energies to building the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Anyway, he says, well, you need to rewrite it. And I said, no, I don't. I'm not going to rewrite it. I was finally standing up for myself. And I hope for the rest of you. They wouldn't take that check. I took the check back from the bishop. And at that point, roughly around that point, I quit paying tithing. I said, no, no. If I can't be sure where my money is going, and it's going to all of these old geezers that, you know, are not putting the money towards children and hungry families, uh, that's my responsibility. They're stealing the money, they're fraudulently uh, taking the money, but I have to take some responsibility myself. It's my money. I earned it. I sweat and tears and broken fingers and whatever. I earned that money. I have a responsibility to see that it goes into the mouths of hungry people. I was never taught that by the Mormons. The Mormons always taught me, we know better. We know better. You just give that money. We don't tell you where it goes. We don't have to tell you where it goes. And it, it's not your money. That, they used to say that to us all the time. It's not your money. Well, whose money is it? It was in my paycheck. It's Jesus. Well, Jesus didn't come to get any. Yeah. But, but we're standing in for Jesus. It's our money. It, you don't have that money. 10% is your obligation to Jesus. Well, they convinced me for 58 years that they were Jesus. I really did want to give my money to Jesus because according to the uh, Sermon on the Mount, he fed the hungry. And uh, he had principles of generosity and uh, goodwill and um, honesty and integrity. Well, they didn't. The Mormon church never has. They've lied, they've cheated, they've scammed, they have uh, been dishonest, uh, they've been uh, hateful, uh, they have been uh, against women, having them in polygamy, they've been against the blacks, uh, not letting them have the priesthood, and they've been against ERA, and they've been against uh, gay rights. They've been against everything. So I kept my check. I should have uh, put it uh, on the wall as, as a token, a sign token and symbol, not a penalty, um, of my change that I grew up. Uh, I matured. I used the brain that I was born with. I used the heart and the emotions that I was born with, and I took responsibility. From that point forward, I'm in charge of my own money. And when I went to the Philippines and I saw poor families and poor children, I gave them directly my money. I went to the Mormon church in Butuan uh, City in uh, Mendenhall, and uh, I didn't see them giving a penny to those poor, hungry people. I uh, adopted two little girls from the Philippines, Abigail and Allison. Uh, they've really lit up my life. Uh, as a young father, I was a typical young father, inexperienced, crazy, uh, doing you know ridiculous things. I didn't know how to be a father. Abigail and Abby, I've been a much better father to, and I haven't had to work. Uh, I've been uh, retired uh, on disability, 
and uh, I was able to be home all day. I was able to go to PTA. I was able to go to IEP meetings. I was able to help and support. They turned out to be wonderful people. I spent my money on those children. They needed help in the Philippines. They were destined to a life of adjunct poverty and uh, poor little Allison, I've said this in one other video, she got typhoid fever uh, when I was still here and she hadn't been adopted. And the people there, they had no money. They couldn't buy eight dollars of penicillin. That was way too much money. Well, I didn't pay the Mormon church. I paid the pharmacy in the Philippines to give that little girl medication. She survived and I eventually adopted her. And uh, she's grown up to be a wonderful uh, young lady. Uh, she uh, works uh, in assisted care. She helps old people. She has a big heart and, and she's very uh, uh, humanitarian. It was a good deal for me, for Allison, and the world. The Mormon Church giving it in a six-figure income to old men that take the poor people's money, I didn't want my money mixed in there anymore. Anymore. I'm in charge now of helping the poor. I donate. I give what I can. I'm not a, a, a um, philanthropist. Good Lord. You know, I... I all I can buy are black shirts that have pockets on them to hold all my computers. Uh, and my insulin is a million dollars a month to keep me alive. So, I think we have to take responsibility. Not organizations. Not churches. There are certain good organizations that um, use our money for what they say they're going to use it for. Uh, the uh, senior center and uh, the uh, Red Cross and uh, other legitimate uh, charities uh, I'm willing to give money to. Um, the Mormon Church won't take your money if you tell them to feed the poor. Isn't that interesting? Do you think Christ with his Sermon on the Mount and giving fish and bread out free to hungry people. If one of those people said to Christ, here, take my fish, take my bread, and please give it to a poor ch a child, Christ would say, oh no, me and the apostles, we're going to eat that bread. We're not going to give it to poor children. Here's the principle. All of my stories have a principle to them. The Mormon Church will not give your money, tithing, they will not give your fast offerings to poor people. Now they'll throw them a couple of crumbs. They didn't even pay 1% of the billions and billions of dollars for humanitarian aid until the last five or seven years that the people in the world got on their ass and said, you have these billions of dollars and you haven't even given 1% to the poor. I think the Catholic Church does 36, 38% uh, to the poor. The Mormons didn't even give 1% for over 100 years. The last seven or eight years, they've broken down because of the IRS and because of the federal government and because of the internet. They don't do what's right because it's right. They do what's right because people, agencies, governments force them to do what's right. And they're always on the, the edge of the envelope. They're always trying to get away with my money and your money to pay for their families and their children. Their children get to go free to BYU. I had to pay tuition. I was just a poor person. I had to pay tuition. So. The principle is this, if you want to give your money to uh, the Mormon Church, who am I to say? Who am I to say you don't have that right? 
you have that right 100%. If you think they're going to give it to poor people, if you think you're fast offering and going without food for 24 hours and giving that extra money to the poor is going to go to the poor, go for it. That floats your boat, go for it. If that makes you happy, why should anybody take that away from you? They shouldn't. Me or anybody else. I'm just telling you the facts, not the truth. Truth is very different. I'm going to do a video on the difference between the truth and facts. But if you want to believe the truth, <clears throat> they tell you what they're going to do with their money and the facts say they're not doing it. You can't fix stupid. You can't fix stupid. Now, there's the principle. And I'm going to say again, I love doing this now. I feel like an entrepreneur. I feel like um, a capitalist. I have a PayPal. If you think this is an important principle, this has helped you, put a dollar. Just put a dollar in the PayPal. I'm blind these days. I, I can't see shit. <laughs> uh, people say, do you want to look at pornography? And I go, yeah, I really would, but do you have it in Braille? <laughs> anyway, hit my uh, subscribe. YouTube, uh, if there's enough subscribe, they'll give me money. That's good. That's good. I've never gotten the money for anything. So if you enjoy, if I entertain, if I give you information, I can't read your um, comments. I love to be able to read your comments, most of them, the Mormon comments, I don't want to ever read, but uh, I'd love to read your comments, and sometimes my sweet wife will have time to sit down and read a couple of comments, but not the hundreds or the thousands, but I do get a little note here, my, my uh, AI uh, iPhone will go beep beep, and that says money, money. It's not the amount of money. It's basically that somebody is saying, gee, you've made this world a little bit better. You haven't set it on fire. Uh, you're not a genius. Uh, I don't agree with everything you say. Some things I think you're stupid. Some things I think you're an asshole. But if you think ever something positive, just put a dollar or more, and it's up to you, so that my little bell rings and I go, God, that's a good thing. I'm sitting in my chair looking out at the beautiful view that I have and thinking, how can I make this world a better place? And if I've made it a better place for you, validate me. Just, you know, just say, hey, if you were sitting on my couch, you go, you know, barn, uh, cockroach, I think that was a good thing. I, I think I've learned something. So, anyway, I'll wait for my <coughs> iPhone to ring. <laughs> it may never ring, I don't know. It may never ring, but I, I have to be honest.